Hi, everyone. This is going to be a walkthrough for question two on exam prep week 13. So this question is on the challenging side. It's going to be a sorting algorithmic design type of question. So before going into this problem, make sure you guys have a solid foundation on sorting algorithms, more specifically on radix sort. OK, so with this in mind, let's dive in. For this problem, we'll be working with exam and student objects, both of which have only one attribute, SID, which is any number, which is a number like any student ID. So I'm gonna assume that a student ID X is a fixed length number, okay? So Gradescope thought it was ready for the midterm. It had meticulously created two arrays, one of exams and one of students, and ordered both on SID such that the ith exam in the exams array has the same SID as the ith student in the students array. So what that means is we had an array of exams and an array of students. I'm gonna represent an, an exam as a square, okay? Actually, let's just make it a rectangle. So we have, let's just say we have four exams. Let's just make it a small class. And let's say that we have Let's do, yeah, circle for students. And let's say that we had four of these students. Okay, perfect. So it states here that each exams and students array has an ordering where the ith exam and the exams array has the same SID as the ith student in the students array. So let's we'll just like play with a simple example. We could say this is 20. This is 30, this is 10, and this is 40. So you guys notice that these arrays are not necessarily sorted by their SID. We just have that idea that in corresponding places, right, the first index of both of them has the same SID and so on. Okay, so the problem here is that Gradescope crashed and the students array was shuffled, but the exams array somehow remained untouched untouched. So somehow let's have like some shuffling happen here. Okay. So we can say that it was shuffled like so. Okay. No one. There we go. Has to match up properly. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this array was shuffled. Okay, so the problem states is that we need to design an O of n time algorithm to reorder the students array appropriately without changing the exams array. For partial credit, you may reorder both arrays. Okay, and then the hint says we can use radix sort. So I'm gonna approach this. I'm just kind of like walking you guys through my mindset how I would approach this problem to begin with. So the first thing I would kind of notice is that if we could simply move 20 to the front, move 30 to the second spot, move 40 to the end, and keep 10 where it is, we're basically done, okay? So all we really need to do is move each student to the correct spot as determined by SID, okay? And to achieve this, it may make sense to, let's, I don't know, start with maybe an intuitive idea of like creating a hash table. So idea one, let's put that down. My first idea, idea one is create a hash table, okay? That maps exam SIDs, okay, to, the index in exams array. Okay, so what that means is that we can map 20 to index zero because the student ID 20 is at index zero. And then we could do the same for the rest. So why is this helpful? It's helpful because with this hash table, all we would need to do is walk through each student, right? And say, we need to move 30 to what index should we move 30 to? Let's move 30 to index one, okay? And we would do that for each 
one of these students. Okay, so the only problem with this approach is the idea that a hash table may not have constant time accessing. Okay, so the problem is a hash table may not have constant time accessing. Okay, so more specifically, the actual problem is that if all of the SIDs hash to the same bucket, we see that the runtime of looking or querying our hash table n times isn't necessarily going to be n. Okay, so what this means is that n queries may take more than n time if SIDs are in same bucket. Okay, so we see here that our first idea is close, but it kind of fails because the hash table isn't entirely meant to give us like a better worst case bound, right? So with this in mind, let's try to like think of another way of solving this problem. I'm just gonna shrink this a bit just for the sake of space. Okay, so my next idea, and this is coming directly from this hint, is that we can use radix sort. So let's first recall like why radix sort would ever be helpful. And the reason radix sort is good is that if we ever have a list of numbers or a list of strings, radix sort works fairly well. Okay, so let's recall the runtime of radix sort, okay, is going to be, and this is just, I'll just use LSD for simplicity. It's gonna be WN plus WR. And I just got this formula from the lecture guide. So I recommend watching the lecture if you guys wanna recap of why this is the case. And I'll quickly define some terms. So W is going to be the width, let's say the max width of an item. Oh no. Okay, and the R is the base or radix. Okay, so we see here that for our problem, the max width of an item, this is going to be a constant, right? Because an SID is of a constant length, right? So we can see that the max width of an item is a constant and we know the base is going to be 10, which is another constant. Okay, so with these both in mind, we can see that the runtime of radix sort, if we are sorting numbers, okay, this is if we're sorting, if sorting numbers is going to be theta of n, okay? So given that sorting numbers is theta of n, what we can do is we can sort the exams and students array on their SID, okay? So my idea is sort exams and students array on SID, okay? And we're gonna use radix sort for this. So we can achieve this theta of n runtime and we can stay within that big O of n bound. So with this in mind, we can see that what will happen, let's just copy this for a quick sec is that we won't actually preserve the ordering of the exams array, but we will fulfill the partial credit requirement, right? Like what would happen is that the tens would be in the front, the twenties would go next, okay? And then we would have the thirties and then the forties, right? Okay. So we can see here that after radix sorting both of the exams and students arrays on SID, we fulfill this partial credit criteria, right? So this is a check, but we still haven't satisfied the actual like point of this question, which is to not change the exams array, okay? But we are on the right track, okay? So the problem here 
is that we lose the problem. Let's repeat is that we lose the prior index of each exam. Okay, so the idea is that we want each student to move to the index of its corresponding exam. Right, that's what like we actually want to have happen. But when we sort each one on SID, we forget that 10 used to be at index three, okay? So we forget that, let's just say like in the example I showed you that exam 10 was at index three. So the simple solution to this question is what if each exam could remember the index that it was at in the initial ordering? Okay, I'll say that again because it's very important. What if each exam could remember the index that it was at in the initial ordering? Okay, what that means is if 20, or if this exam right here could remember that it was at index zero, Okay, so let's say right here, index zero. So 20 is gonna store the index that it was at in the previous ordering. So now what we can do is once we move the student 20 to this spot, right? Or once we call radix sort on both the exams and students arrays, if each exam could remember where it was in the past, what we can do is we can perform, we can compare every pair of these exams and students and then move the student to its corresponding index, right? So what that means is when we're looking at this pair, we would say that the student 20 used to be at, or it didn't used to be, but the complementary exam for student 20, right? This exam right here, was at index zero. So what we should do is move student 20 to index zero, right? That's the idea here. Okay, so here is the final solution with this in mind. Okay, so let's quickly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we need to somehow have each exam keep track of its prior index. So our first step is we will define a new class called a new class, and I'm just gonna write it below. So we will create some class called exam wrapper, okay? And each exam wrapper will store two attributes. It'll store an exam, and it'll also store, and we will call it print, like old index. Okay, so each exam wrapper object is gonna store an exam and an index. And what that's enable us, that, what that is going to enable us to do is that for each one of these exams, we can store the actual exam here. So this one would be, like in this example, it would be 30, and then we would store its index in the exams array. So here we would say at index one, okay? So we would define a new class, okay? And create exam. wrapper for each exam instance. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing is we will radix sort the exam wrappers and students, right? And okay, so what that's gonna do is that now we will have this ordering, okay? And I'm just gonna quickly draw it again, just so you guys 
see if it one last time. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so what that's going to do, I'm just gonna change these numbers here, is that it'll order these exams, okay? So it'll order Okay, and we will call these the exam wrappers, and we will call these the students. Okay, so each one of these exam wrappers is also gonna store its old index. So I'm just gonna store that in the top right corner. So this 10 used to be at index two, the 20 used to be at index three, the 30 used to be at index zero, and the 40 used to be at index one. And these are the indices just to reiterate. Okay, so now after radix sorting the exam wrappers and students, we will move the i student to the prev to the old index of the i exam wrapper. Okay, and what that's going to do is that we see here we'll go to ten. And we'll say 10, you should move to index two. So we'll move 10 to index two. And we could probably create a new array to do this. So it would probably be helpful in this process to create a new array. So create new array. And then we will move the ID student back to the old array from the past. Okay. Yeah, so that is all for question two. I hope you guys enjoyed this question. It's definitely on the challenging side, but it's a good way to like see an application of a Radix sort in a real life situation. Yeah, thanks for watching and keep posting for the next video.